Hi everyone, welcome to the video tutorial on how to paint a hedgehog. And first I'm just quickly going to um, walk you through the colors that we will need and the supplies, basic supplies. So um, as you can see we have watercolor paper, uh, it's a small format, I think it's A5. Um, so obviously this one I think is 300, 300 grams. Um, and it's it needs to be quite rough um, if it's 100 percent cotton it would be the best but if it's any watercolor paper it will do uh, then we have watercolor palette uh, with some spaces some little um, holes for your paints then we have some paints here so any sort of watercolor paints will do um, as long as you have lighter shades of uh, lighter shades of brown and some darker shades of brown uh, some red pink and blue so here if we're talking about the colors I have we have sepia burned umber and burned sienna yellow ochre carmine uh, quinacridone rose cobalt blue and ultramarine blue so I'm sure this will be more than enough but um, if you have other watercolors like I said as long as you, as long as you have the same sort of colors color palette um, it will be completely fine then we go to watercolor brushes so I have uh, these are squirrel watercolor brushes they're quite nice and soft and <laughs> The number's faded, but this is, you can kind of see how big it is. It's quite small, smallish, I would say. Then it's a bit bigger. So this one is number six. So the other one is probably um, three or four, I would guess. So this is number six, and this is a small number one. What color? Sable rigger. So when you wet it, it gets quite thin this is for thin lines like that and then we just have pencil what uh sorry <laughs> just pencil and a rubber also we have a glass for water i like to use that one because you can mix different colors for example you can have this one for like dark colors say brown and this one for light pink or light blue so you don't need to change water but if you have just one glass maybe like this this is also fine <laughs> but you might just want to change water quick um more often and you can use um uh, this is some just <laughs> toilet paper roll um to get rid of excessive water you can use paper towel or just uh, some towel all will be fine all right that's it so we're gonna move on to our first step is um, pencil sketch so now we're going to uh, paint draw our hedgehog and we're gonna start with some rough body shape so we should place it in the middle of our um, sheet of paper maybe something like that make sure we've got some edges i've got some enough space in the middle so it kind of looks like a bowl so i'm basically drawing a bowl uh, make sure you don't press on the pencil too hard so you can erase it if you need it so it's very very subtle it's <laughs> basically a ball uh, but that's what we need maybe it's a bit because it's kind of it's rolled um, rolled forward okay so this will do for now now we're gonna place his little cute ears so our goal is to make it as cute as we can um, I might move the ears a bit closer. <clears throat> it's fine if it doesn't 
uh, if you can't, you know, draw it from the first time. I erase and redraw quite a lot, so it's it's normal to correct yourself. Kind of looks like a cat at the moment <laughs> because it doesn't have any uh, any needles. I think they're called in a different way, actually. Okay, um, then we can add a little bit of um, a little bit of pattern just to highlight where these needles are going to be. Big, a bit smaller, smaller ear, like this. Uh, we're just going to change it a bit, the edges, so it looks more like a hedgehog rather than <laughs> a cat. Then, because it's folded inwards, we're just going to add this, this kind of bottom line. like that so just make sure that the edges are not just adding a bit of randomness to this okay now we're gonna draw his face so we'll start with eyes so drawing is a quite a hard part of the <laughs> painting Need to get it right and in our case we need to get it cute make sure it looks lovely so his eyes are like ovals like that then he has his little nose somewhere here if you try and place it his mouse mouse and uh, the tricky bit is to make him smile kind of it's a bit wide mm, I think he is, looks like he does look like a smiling hedgehog to me don't know what you think. Um, just changing a bit his nose. We'll make them a little bit bigger. It's a lot about trying and Testing if it looks like you want it to look. I might make it a bit, a bit more narrow. I haven't really seen a lot of smiling hedgehogs, so I'm just <laughs> imagining. I think I'm quite happy with this one. Uh, so we'll just we can just leave. I'm just erasing and adding a better sort of line, making sure your eyes are your eyes look the same. There's some kind of light bits on his nose. Um, so I think it looks looks good to me. Maybe I would just make him not that circle make it a little bit flatter um, if I can but I think it looks it looks fine Maybe. 
maybe I will place his ears a bit lower actually. I'm just looking at the picture. Yeah, I think it looks this looks more like a hedgehog now rather than <laughs> a strange cat. Okay. This will be his front. His head. Okay. I'm happy with this. So we can start coloring now. Okay, now we start coloring and we're going to start with a bigger brush. And we will color his uh, face and his light bit that we can see. So make sure you have enough water, but not too much. So try it on the edges a little bit like that. Then we will start with a lighter color, which is yellow ochre. So it should be quite watery. And then we'll add a bit of a darker shade burned umber a bit like that and maybe a little bit of sepia if you see that's a bit dark so we have a nice kind of brownish color and then add a bit of water to just maybe a tiny bit of blue To make it a bit colder, a little bit of pink, so it's a nice light color. Oops, too pink. <laughs> now it's a bit purpley, but I quite like it. It's a bit of trying, testing, and trying what it's going to be like. I don't want him to be boring, boring brownish. Okay, but we're just doing the first kind of layer. And like that. So making sure the bit around his eyes is going to be quite light. Be adding a bit of a lighter shade here, like this. Because this is where this is where the light goes. So we can color most of this because it needs to be colored. We'll put other bits on top. Maybe just avoid eyes at the moment because we will need to leave um A white spot around the eyes. I think when I actually when I painted it the first time I used a different technique but <laughs> never mind we'll see how it's gonna look this time. You live and learn and your style change changes. So it's important to Keep experimenting. Can't really go wrong with hedgehog, to be honest. So nothing to worry about. So I'm just leaving the eyes and nose out, not coloring it. Hope you can see. It's kind of looking very light, light brownish, pinkish kind of color. So now I think oops, I'm going to go ahead and add some nice things to his needles. So I'll probably start with a lighter color 
actually. Um, so light a shade of brown, which is yellow ochre and burnt sienna. I'm just going to add a bit of a random patches. You want to create this nice shape. Um, I'm leaving some white bits too because it's nice. This is where the light will go. Uh, with watercolor, its um, its main advantage is transparency. So when you're leaving white bits of paper, it's kind of showing the light, and it creates lovely effect so i'm adding a bit more lighter yellowish here just thought maybe i'll actually add some green because it just looks like there might be some green sap gray Sometimes green appears where you don't expect it at all, but it actually looks quite nice. Maybe I need a bit of blue so it doesn't look like it doesn't look all the same. And then if you if you start adding new color, make sure you add it on other parts as well. So it's all blended nicely. I'm adding a bit darker brown now because this is the bit which is probably in the shade. So this is the bit where you can have have some fun. Just go with the flow because it's it's a hedgehog. You know you can just play with it. I'm just adding a bit a bit of brown on the edges just to highlight that this is where the hedgehog ends. <laughs> this is this darker bit. I think this time I look even better, which is good. <laughs> I'd like to think that I'm improving. So now we're just going to color his ears. You can use kind of the same mix. Brownish. Need to be quite dark. Try and use the tip of your brush. For the ears. Might even need to come back to this. I like the ears a bit later when it's dried. So it's looking nicely. I'm just going to add a bit of color to this. And here's some, some kind of um, hairline, I would say. <laughs> Why not? This is his hairline. I did it with pink just to make it a bit fun. It can be quite an impressionistic hedgehog if we want it. Right, and now 
we're moving to the most interesting bit for me adding a little bit of color and shade to his lovely face so we're just having some mixture of pink on his cheeks and a little bit of French ultramarine plus pink will create some purplish and a bit of cobalt blue it's still a bit purpley so adding more blue to the mixture once we're happy No, I need to make sure I have enough water because it needs to be very light, very light like this. And more brown on top. Can move your sheet experiment with it so it kind of flows because it's watercolor that's what it's for just create this nice flow Don't remove excessive water like that so I think we can leave it here because we'll need to add his nose and some shadow around his nose so we can actually do it now it just shouldn't be too dark i'm actually not using my um i'm actually use it now a smaller brush So we're adding shadow to his nose. Like this, quite light, keep it light. We can always go back and make it darker, but you can't undo it <laughs> if you made it too dark. Maybe actually, I think it's good. I think it's good. Going around the nose again. Just connect it here so it's a nicer blend. It's mainly just water in my toothbrush at the moment. So see, the nose is not very it's not really sticking now so i'm just gonna add more brownish color oh that's a good point i've added some carmine uh, which gives it a nice shade okay so see this is a bit too soon because it's still quite wet so i'm gonna wait wait for a bit but what I might do, I might add it around the ears. While it's quite wet. So when you paint watercolor, you should always look at the whole picture. What needs adding. Also need to make sure when you Say I want to do the eyes and the nose, but I know that around the eyes and nose it's still quite wet. So if I start adding color, it will um, start to get blurry and the paint will go around the edges, which I don't want. 
so instead while I'm waiting I'm just adding some touches some touches here so I think now I can try and add a darker bit around the nose See how it goes? It's still quite wet. I think I'll be fine. I'll just leave it. His lovely little nose. When we do the mouth, it will look better. Okay. So, like I say, like I said, while we're waiting, we'll just go back to the bottom bit. Maybe make make add some touches. Made in a bit of green, just for fun. It's also important to know when to stop <laughs> which is sometimes quite hard because you just want to carry on because it looks like it's needed maybe I have too much white so I might color some, some white okay it's hard to say at the moment because we haven't done his face which is going to be the darkest um, part of the hedgehog it might be a good idea to still do some edges like that. Why not? Okay. I think we can start adding his eyes. So it will be mainly sepia with my smaller brush, but not too small. Don't forget to leave a little white dot for the kind of reflection, the light. that we can see in the eyes so when you add your dark accents it looks much better <laughs> everything comes to comes together oops this is what I was telling you about so if this happened it kind of went over the line we just wash the brush dry it a little bit and then try to remove it, but it keeps keeps going. We'll just wait. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. We'll do another bit. Our hedgehog is quite impressionistic, so again, don't forget to leave the white bit. Kind of in the same place. I'll try and correct this bit that flew. <laughs> the paint just doesn't want to stay. In my circle. Try 
trying to correct my hedgehog, which looks like he's a bit upset at the moment because the pain went over. These things happen with watercolor. We'll just add in more color inside. Because we will assume this is his kind of shadow bit. I'll just go back to this eye a bit later. I'll just do like that. Okay, so now we just need to wait. Just need to wait to finish our eyes. Meanwhile, I'm, I'll work around the edges a little bit. Hopefully, you can see. Hopefully your eye was okay. <laughs> it didn't it didn't go anywhere like mine did. And then you will need to wait and correct it. But your watercolor is quite um, unpredictable sometimes. It flows. It does its own thing and you just have to go with it. This is why it's one of the hardest medium mediums to use. Right. I think once we've added the nose, it should get better. I'll try to use the smaller brush this time, <laughs> maybe <laughs> to avoid the same situation with the nose. So I'm using darker brown with a little bit of ultramarine just to make it colder. Painting cute animals. This nice feeling when when it comes together and suddenly a hedgehog face looks at you <laughs> from a piece of paper. Maybe it's just going to be a bit impressionistic, Mr. Hedgehog. Okay. Just noticed there's a bit of white, which I can correct a little bit. Doesn't need to be here. So, I've corrected my eye a little bit. Now we carry on with the nose. So I want it to be a little bit colder, so I'm adding blue. And pink. 
uh, just to create this kind of cobalt blue ultramarine adding it to my mixture and a little bit of sepia still maybe a bit of green right let's see what's gonna look like yeah it looks nice Because at the moment it's too light and his nose is quite dark. So see sometimes with watercolor it's just the amount of time you need to wait for it to dry. Accents. And the most exciting bit is drawing his mouth, his smiley mouth. I make it a different way, different shades, a bit of pink. So it's not all the same sort of line. So now it started smiling. Our little hedgehoggy. The baby, you know, the baby hedgehogs are called hoglets. <laughs> the cutest world word, hoglets. Maybe he's a hoglet. So now he starts smiling. Woohoo! And his eyes are fine. And. <laughs> I think it looks good. We might just add a bit of color here. Like this. Just same sort of brownish shades. It's not that white. And just some this is just water, which I'm just blending in. And here I just want to add some cheeks. So pink pink and carmine a bit of yellow okra <laughs> still very pink kind of want a bit more red than pink and this can be darker here Because this is his edge. That's where the shade is. And some blending because this lighter part of hedgehog is already dried. So we just want some. We don't want rough edges. And maybe since we're here, <laughs> maybe we can change his nose. Although I quite like it like this, but maybe we can try see what it's going to look like. Just a tiny bit darker.
and I would say under his nose it's more bluish so a slightly different shade like this okay so he's our hedgehog it's ready you can just see what's missing um so we've got to leave the white bit on his nose so i'm using a white gouache which is always handy to have and we'll just add this white bit some lights reflection and we can highlight it in his eyes too so his eyes look more real there he is our smiley hedgehog <laughs>